In the last video, we did an introduction into compound interest and the difference between compound interest and simple interest. So we can see here in blue, we calculated how much we would get if we were using simple interest versus in red, what we would get if we were using a compound interest. So compound interest was when we were charged interest not only on our principal, but also on the interest gained on that principal. So it was interest gained on interest versus simple interest in which it was only charged based on the principal amount. So in this lesson, we are going to try and find a formula that we can use to calculate compound interest, similar to the A-PIN formula that we found for simple interest a few videos ago. Let's say we had 200 Rand, and let's say that this was just money we deposited into a special savings account that paid 5% compound interest per annum. So in year one, I'm gonna abbreviate that by Y1, at the end of year one, the amount of money that we are going to have is going to be our principal of 200 multiplied by one plus 0 0.05. If we expand this out, that's just going to be 200 plus 5% of 200. So that is our principal plus our interest at the end of that first year. That is going to come out to 210 Rand. Now in year two, we are going to be charged that 5% interest, but it's going to be charged on the 210 Rand. So in year two, it's going to be 210 Rand multiplied by one plus 0 0.05. That is just our 210 Rand plus 5% of the 210 Rand at the end of that year. But what I want to bring your attention to is that this 210 Rand can simply be expressed as 200 multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.05. That is exactly what we got when we did this calculation. We got 210 Rand. So we can express this 210 Rand as this 200 multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.05, which is this expression right here. So the total accumulated money at the end of year two can be expressed as our 210, which we've just written out as this blue expression here, multiplied by this because we have to remember that this is what we're going to gain in interest at the end of that second year. So it's going to be multiplied by one plus 0 0.05. If anyone is confused, what I've just done in this expression right here is I've rewritten this 210 Rand multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.05 as this blue expression, which is another way of saying 210, plus we're multiplying our 210 by this black expression, which is why I've added that here. So we're just doing 210, which is what we have here in blue, multiplied by what we have here in black. So just to make that ultra clear, I'll underline this part to make sure you know that this arrow is referring to this 210 that I've written here in blue, and this is going to be what I've written right there. And now we know that whatever we get as the answer for this, when we multiply all of this out, the answer that we get for this is what we are going to multiply by one plus 0 0.05 in our third year to get the amount at the end of that third year. So year three is going to be our 200 Rand times our one plus 0 0.05 times our one plus 0 0.05. That's just rewriting what we had at the end of year two and now we are going to take that and multiply that by 1 plus 0 0.05. That's because we know that whatever the answer is for the amount of money that's accumulated after year two is just going to be multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.05 in the next year. So hopefully you can notice a pattern here. And that pattern is that for year one, we had our principal of 200 
multiplied by one plus our interest rate, and that was our expression for year one. For year two, we had our principal again, multiplied by one plus our interest rate squared. Because we can see we have two of these brackets which are identical. We have one plus 0 0.05 multiplied by one plus 0 0.05. So that can be expressed as one plus our interest rate squared. Since we have two of these brackets. In year three, we had our principal of 200, same principal every time, 200, 200, 200. So we had our principal multiplied by one plus our interest rate, this time to the power of three. And that's because we have three of these identical brackets. We have this blue one, the black one, and the red one. These are all the same, one plus 0 0.05. So that is one plus our interest rate cubed. And so our formula for compound interest is going to be that the accumulated amount of money at the end of your term is going to be your principal multiplied by one plus your interest rate to the power of n. And this n represents the number of years. So when we have one year, it's going to be to the first power, which we don't have to include. If it's two years, it's going to be to the second power. If it's three years, it's going to be to the third power. So this is your formula for compound interest. You can see that this is different than the formula we had for simple interest. For simple interest, our formula was A is equal to P times 1 plus I times N. This was simple interest. So instead of multiplying the number of years by I in the brackets, we're taking this N out and it becomes a power that this bracket is going to be raised to. So you can still refer to it as a pin because we can see that it's still a pin, except you just have to remember that when it's simple interest, the N is going to be in the brackets next to the I. And when it's compound interest, you have to take that N out of the brackets and it becomes an exponent. And in the next video, we will go over different examples where we use this compound interest formula.